I told you you could get a name brand laptop for $79? But you might ask yourself, Will, it's $79, what could it possibly do? Stay tuned, I'm gonna find out if this laptop is gonna work for you. Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at a laptop that I found on my vacation, just in case you didn't notice, I took a couple weeks off, for $79. That's right guys, 79 bucks I got this laptop for. And it's the name brand, it's a Lenovo. The only catch is, it is a Chromebook. And before this video, I didn't know much about Chromebook, I'll be honest with you. But before we get into that, let me tell you about the specs of this machine, what you're getting for 79 bucks. And I did purchase this at my Best Buy and they gave me free shipping so I went ahead and got it. So let's talk about what this laptop has in it. This is a Lenovo Chromebook 3 with an 11.6 inch HD screen, a Celeron processor that's the N4020, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now this one is the Onyx Black Chromebook as you can see. And for 79 bucks with free shipping, I was like, well, maybe it's time to learn about Chromebooks. Now, setup on this was really easy. You go through the process of setting up like any Google device. You go through a couple questions. It needs to learn your voice. In my case, it didn't need to learn my voice because I already set up a Google Home that I never used. It walks you through, it sets it up. The great thing about this is you log in with your Google username and password. If you use Google a lot for your everyday use, like the documents, stuff like that, or you use Google Drive, or you're a YouTuber, or you have a YouTube account, you log in with your Google username and password, and anything that you've ever set up on your Google will automatically transfer over to this machine. So if you have contacts, if you have calendars, Google Calendars, everything that you use with Google, if you're signed into your Google account, you sign into this on your Google account, and everything kind of transfers over to this machine. It really has a great ecosystem right off the bat, which if you guys watch my videos, you know I love Apple mainly for for their ecosystem. I like the fact that I can use my iPad, phone, computer, and laptop, and they all sync together, and that's one of the biggest things that helped me organize and stick with Apple. Well, Google is really following suit with this, and it's pretty exciting. Right off the bat, I gotta say, guys, the keyboard and the touchpad, very reminiscent of a MacBook Air. I have a MacBook Air, and I have the newer one with the M chip where they fix the keyboard. That's what this is like. The keyboard is really, really nice. I really enjoyed this keyboard. I actually wrote this script on it. I've been working with this for over two weeks now. The touchpad. This is the first laptop outside of Apple with a touchpad that I've actually liked. I was really surprised. I was expecting a wonky kind of keyboard and it even has a lot of the gestures that you use on a MacBook to access screens or move over to multiple desktops. Let's check out the sound on this thing and I'm gonna pull up a song and let you see what it sounds like at full volume. It's not that bad for what you're paying. Now I noticed that the speakers are facing down and it's kind of using your table or anything you're leaning on to kind of echo that music. So the speakers are right here on either side. You can see the holes right there. Not bad. The ports that you have on this device, you have two USB type C's on either side for charging or peripherals for USB type C, a locking mechanism on this side. You have USB on this side and you have a USB on this side. You also have a micro SD card right here and you have a headphone Jack. Now it does have a built-in web camera for this price point which is actually pretty cool so let's see what the web camera looks like and this is the video quality that you're gonna get on this and this is the sound quality you're gonna get on this recording as well so that way you can kind of get an idea of what your video chat will look like and feel like so it's not the best camera per se but it's not the worst either so it's, it gets the job done so that's the video quality it's only like a 720p camera battery life has been 
been amazing. I haven't charged this in three days and I'm probably using it well over three hours a day. Bringing this to work with me, I was using it like to slack off basically, you know, YouTube videos, stuff like that. And the battery, I'm right now, I, I haven't charged it in three days and I figure you probably got about eight hours worth of time on this already. I'm at 31%. You, you, you can't really do any better than that. The battery management on Chrome OS or Lenovo that was able to get the battery working that well, but they did an amazing job. So really impressed with the battery. You're definitely gonna get long term out of this. Now this did come with a 45 watt charger. USB type C, my thousand dollar computer only came with a 35 watt and this one came with a 45. So that's pretty impressive. And the ports aren't either side of the computer. So it doesn't matter which side you connect it in. What is a Chromebook? Well, most people would say it's an Android tablet with a keyboard. Others would just say it's a web surfing computer. And other people would say that it's just a computer for school kids. And all that's true, it really is. What I believed before I actually got to play with one. When I found out that it was actually a Linux based system that Chrome OS is actually built on, you know, with Android, that could open up a lot more doors to put other software on this and make it very interesting for me because I'm into using Raspberry Pi. So that almost comes out to be a Raspberry Pi 4 with the screen, speakers, and everything. So it had me asking the question, what can you do on a Chromebook OS? What, what work can we actually do? How far could we push this operating system to actually do something? So I did a bunch of tests. The first one was video editing. Although you can do it, I would not highly recommend it. Honestly, didn't have high hopes for it, but it, it's possible to do small video editing on it. You know, maybe TikToks or Instagram kind of posts. Now, as far as Photoshop, or a photo editing piece of software. I use Infinity Photo. I was not able to find a version of Infinity Photo for this little laptop or Google Chrome. GIMP was able to load through Linux and I do believe that they have a version of Lightroom for this but not really Photoshop for the Chromebook yet. So I think that's coming. I did look to see what Adobe products were on there but it looked like it was only the Google Store. I'd like to see it straight from the actual website Side. So from what I've researched, and like I said, I don't use the Adobe Suites anymore, but I believe they don't make a Photoshop for Chromebook. And in Affinity Photo, they don't have a version for this. It's funny, they have one for the iPad, but they don't have one for this. Who knows, it might be coming out. But I was able to load GIMP on this, and GIMP worked really well. It's a free photo editing piece of software that you can get on there, and it represents Photoshop a little bit, and I played around with it, and it actually worked really well. Can you watch YouTube videos in HD? Yes, yes you can, in high resolution on this screen, and they play really smooth. Can you game on this? Ugh, you can kind of game on it. Unfortunately, all the games that you get off the Google Play Store basically need touch. Very few of them you don't. I downloaded a couple of them. It plays them, it shows them, but you really can't use a mouse and a keyboard. And this is not touch. I did not mention that earlier, but this is not a touch screen. So you're not gonna have that capability to play a lot of the games. So that does count against it. But I did download and use Steam Link. So if you have a gaming machine and you set up Steam Link with it, you can ultimately use this as a portable gaming computer if you have a gaming computer at home. I actually did it with my Mac. I set up CSGO. It worked really well. The streaming was really good and that was doing it wireless. Can you get Office on this? Yes, you can get Office on this. You get you could use the Office Cloud Suite kind of thing. Don't see it necessary because you have Google Docs automatically in this. So they have one called Documents and that's like Word. And then they have Sheets which is like Excel. They have slides, which is PowerPoint. So you have everything built in that you could just automatically use it. And those are web-based, believe it or not. You're able to use them and then it stores it on your Google Drive, which if you're not familiar with Google Drive, you get 15 gigs for free on Google Drive that you could store your documents on. And those documents usually don't take up much space. Now, how is this Chromebook 3 good at web surfing? Well, I've had multiple tabs open at once. People were saying you could only do four tabs. I've always had like five, six, or seven 
sometimes even 10, and I haven't really seen a problem with it. Even with multiple programs, I really didn't have a problem with that. Another thing that I was worried about, could you hook an external monitor and keyboard to this? Oh, <laughs> yes, you can. I actually used the same USB Type-C docking station that I used for my Mac, and it was a USB Type-C, and I just hooked it up, and I was able to use my monitor, and I was able to use several peripherals, like a keyboard, a mouse. Another really cool feature is not only does it use dual screen when you have the laptop open, but if you shut it, you actually get the full desktop on the screen. All right, so for my 3D printer guys out there, what 3D printing software can you use on this? Well, I was able to get three different types of software to work pretty good. You do have to download Linux, but it's actually a really easy process and you can actually do it through the actual settings on the computer and you can activate Linux and actually be able to download a lot of these programs and run it off of Linux. So the programs that I was able to get working and some of them were a pain in the butt to get on, but they did work. So I did get Cura to work. It's not bad for small things. I actually did bring this in. This is a holder for a spray bottle and I was able to spin around it, look at it, slice it and export it out and put it to my 3D printer. So you can use this for 3D printing with Cura. Bigger models, this thing bogs down completely and you could be sitting there over five minutes for it to slice. So it's not the greatest. Then I downloaded Prusa Slicer. That worked a little bit better. I was able to slice bigger things, but it still took a long time. Another thing that I did try also was Chitto box. That was another one that was really hard to put in, but I got it working and slice up stuff. Again, the bigger the model or more complex the model, it may not be able to handle it. So I wouldn't say that this is an easy 3D printing computer, but it is capable of doing it in a pinch. And there's the proof, guys. I mean, spray bottle holder worked. Along with the 3D printing software, Blender surprisingly works really, really, really well. Now I am talking about the modeling part. I haven't done any rendering on this. I don't know if that would be good, but modeling, I had no problem. I was able to open up files that I've made in the past and was able to work with them. And I even did a little sculpting in Blender using the laptop. Obviously I hooked a mouse to it to make it easier because the touchpad usually with Blender is not very good. Can you remote access your PC or Mac? Yes. So let's say you have a home desktop and you just want this laptop just to access your home computer. You do it through the actual Chrome browser. You set up the Chrome browser. In my case, it was a Mac. You could also do this on a PC, but you could set it up on your home computer and you download a plugin through Chrome browser and you're actually able to connect to your home computer through this one and actually use it. So that was really cool. And it was really cool that was built into the Chrome browser. I like that. So needless to say, there's a lot to be said about this little Chrome book for 79 bucks or probably at the time you're looking at this it's under a hundred bucks quite the bang for the buck really great builds quality I gotta say it doesn't feel like a cheap laptop at all I've been dying to get a Lenovo machine I didn't think it was gonna be a Chromebook I thought it would be a PC but I am really impressed with Lenovo so overall I'm very impressed for the price point on this but it is not all good the screen is really lacking it has very weird angles one side or another you have a hard time seeing the screen the OS is limited to the software that you can download I did get a lot of software able to download onto it but it is still lacking in a lot of areas of getting certain types of software we did alleviate some of that with the Linux system but it's it's a real pain in the butt workaround kind of thing I wish I could see more stuff on their web store or or on Google Play that you could download for Chromebook. And I do have a feeling it is coming. I really gotta say that I misjudged Chromebooks. They really come a long way since they were launched. Like, I think it's been over 10 years. It really has been, I think, a contender for Mac and Windows. I think it's gonna get more and more as a contender because it's kind of like a mesh between the two. You, you, you have a lot of the Windows kind of things that you would want and you have a lot of the Apple or Mac kind of interfaces that you want and they kind of merged them together and made the best of both worlds. They just need to get more of the software developers and stuff like that more on board, which with Linux you'll be able to do. I just think they need to make it more user friendly for someone that doesn't know how to use Linux or doesn't want to learn how to use Linux to just kind of more of a web store. I think it would definitely help them. But I really do feel like I misjudged. I thought it was just an Android tablet with a keyboard myself. I did think that. So my overall thoughts on this little lab 
laptop. I give it a four out of five, guys, and I'll tell you why. Because some of you guys get a little touchy about my star system here, and I don't know why, it's just my opinion. The lack of screen and some of the lack of software that you could get on this. There is a little lax here, but I don't know what you want for $100. It's really great for that price point. It's just those two little things that kind of got in my way. But overall, the screen is usable. The OS is usable. It's just for the average person, I feel like it's more of a four because they would have to learn a little bit something. With that said, I did actually recommend this to my mother. She is a Nota Republic and she is just needs Google Docs basically and PDF files to be able to open and print them out. Do contracts, which this connected to newer printers. This connects right away was able to find it and scan and hook up to it. Who I would say this computer for? I think this is definitely a budget-friendly type of computer for someone on the go that can actually do remote access if they needed to or simple projects or someone like my mother that needs to just have word processing and then more of a web type of experience, a media consumption device. It's definitely that. I would say it's good for a student. I also think it's a great device for somebody that wants to get into Linux programming because you, you have a Linux interface where you can actually learn Linux coding and not break the budget, especially right now with the chip shortage going on and the prices of Raspberry Pis. I'm looking at Raspberry Pi 4s and they're going like $89 to, some of them are going for like 200 bucks now. So this is a great alternative if you don't want to play with the Raspberry Pi itself and you just want to learn Linux or learn how to program in that. I do say that it's still not there for the power users, but I truly believe it's coming. I think they do make faster laptops for Chrome OS and they're mainly talking about Chrome OS in this aspect. They do have Intel i5s and 8 gigs of RAM on up. You can get a powerhouse machine and probably do more of higher end stuff for Cura, but that's not the point of this video. The point was to see what a $79 laptop could do and also discuss us is Chrome OS worth it and I really think it is that's it for me guys make sure you like and subscribe if this video helped you in any way and ring that bell if you want to get notified when I make a video and remember you could do anything if you put your mind to it later guys I love the look of this but it's just maybe it's because I'm Italian I'm very greasy you can see all my finger smooths on it you can see it on the actual laptop itself I know what you're thinking, Crazy Will's Tech Show's over, what do I do now? Real simple guys, you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button and then you check out my other videos. It's not over, I made a lot. It's been a good year.